And Mind Crypto here. I hope we're all having a wonderful weekend. I know I am. I had a day off yesterday, my usual Saturday day off. Anyhow, the title of the video is One Million Quant. Read the data. But remember, I'm not a financial advisor and none of this is financial advice and none of the information provided in these videos should ever be taken as a signal to buy or to sell. But first and foremost, we look at these crypto bubbles and as we can see, a bit more green today and Quant is up to $109, ranked 57 with a market cap of $1.31 billion and the 24-hour volume is very low, $11.81 million, currently down 0.2% in the hour, down 0.3% in the day, and down 5.3% in the week. And in the last 30 days, we're down 20%. But as you know, it doesn't bother me. I'm here for the long term and you're going to find out why. Now, we can see after a three week pause, this private wallet has started accumulating again. Transaction of 2,658 quant 10 hours ago. This was yesterday and a value of $290,000. Total wallet is 37,696 and holding $4.1 million of quant. So no outflows since the wallet was created two years ago. They are scooping. And this isn't the only wallet. Now, I had this message, which is fair enough, but I look at this in a different viewpoint. He says 250 wallets of this size would be nice. Still seems like loads of spare quant supply on exchanges to allow these large holders to accumulate. Retail don't seem interested in quant, which I completely disagree with. I said to him that this is a subjective viewpoint. If you zoom out, you can see that nearly 1 million quant has left the exchange reserve since June 2022 until now. Another two years of the same sees the reserves very, very low. Now, this was a post from Dread Bongo in 2021. With dramatic quant lockups and central bank volumes flowing through the network, we will see one of the most fierce supply shocks in all of crypto. The need for quant token by participants will be extremely high and desire by investors will intensify due to scarcity. And I completely agree. And that was back in 2021. Now, my reasoning behind this is if you look at this, right, we can see from here, we got, which was in January 2022, we got this sideways action and a sort of a peak here. We've got what? what 2.3 2. 2. 2. million quant on exchange reserves. And what have we seen since then? This all the way down. Now, this is a great trend and this is zooming out from literally all of time through quant. Now, if you're seeing this, and all of the supply of quant is pretty much out, but we've got 1.4 million on exchanges and we are seeing a decline from here. From two years ago, we've seen 1 million quant literally disappear. And from here, it was around 2.1 million and we've seen this drop all the way down where we've seen 700,000 quant literally leave into private wallets. Now, what we need to understand is that these private wallets aren't just gonna buy up a ton low just because they can. They want to keep the prices low and they don't want to cause panic. They don't want to send the price sky high because that means they won't be able to store this at these prices. Because if they say go and buy a million tokens of quant, well, what we're going to see, everybody sells off, takes their money and the banks lose money or the institutions lose money. So they're going to buy in slowly. That's the gameplay. And for how long? We'll have to wait and see. Another two years probably. That's the way I see it because eventually this supply is going to keep dropping. But until then, we're still going to see this whole narrative that quant's boring, quant is doing nothing, quant is this, quant is that, you know, retail aren't interested in it, but they obviously are. Um, but they want to keep us bored so that we then sell off our money. These big buyers, that's what I'm talking about. These people, these, whoever they are, whether they're licensed lockups, whether they're institutions, whether they're just big whales, they will bore you out of the market. And this is just the patience game in my eyes, my personal opinion. I look at this completely different. I'm, I'm zooming out and I'm looking at these reserves dropping. And that's a big factor for price movement. So the more we see drop on the exchange reserves, the higher the price we're going to eventually see. And at some point, people will start noticing because this here, two years, we've seen almost a million tokens leave exchanges. Now, 
People only look at short-term price movement. I look at the exchange reserves. I look at price movement. Price doesn't bother me at all. It could go down to $50. I'll keep buying it because I know at that point, if we did drop that low, more and more would come off the exchanges. So bear this in mind when you say it's boring, people don't like it. Well, they obviously do because we've seen a million tokens leave the exchanges in two years. Now, another two years or at least another year as we move up towards a bull market, the four year cycle that we all talk about, we could see more and more of this leave the exchanges. And as we do, we're gonna see a scarcity. Like Dread Bongo just said here, a scarcity will intensify. So just bear that in mind when you think of quant and it's boring and it's, you know, not, it's not going up, it's not this, it's not that. I don't look at it like that. I look, I look at this as a long-term view and this data to me is very, very positive. Now we see this from Finality, the new ISO 222 global payments messaging standard will enable a universal approach to managing cross-border payments. This will enhance the speed and transparency of settlements and clarify a consistent standard of communication. Now we know who the head is of the British delegation, which is Gilbert Verdian. I've already posted something about this previously. And as we can see here, this is the Bank of England website. The Bank of England welcomes the Bank of International Settlements, the BIS Committee on Payment and Market Infrastructures. Publication today, harmonized ISO 222 data requirements for cross-border payments. The ISO 222 global payments messaging standard is being adopted by payment systems around the world, including CHAPS, which transitioned in June 2023. The bank believes that global adoption of the CPMI ISO 222 data requirements will help reduce inefficiencies which arise along the cross-border payment chain due to misaligned message flows and inconsistent data usage. The internationally consistent implementation of CPMI ISO 222 data requirements will help to lead to the enhancement of cross-border payment messages through, for example, increased straight through processing, this will help the G20 achieve its cost, speed and transparency targets for cross-border payments. In light of these benefits, the Bank of England intends to align the CHAPS ISO 222 message usage guidelines with the CPMI ISO 222 data requirements by the end of 2025, ahead of the end 2027 timeline for global adoption set out by the CPMI report. The bank encourages other market infrastructures and payment service providers participating in cross-border payments to align their ISO 222 message usage guidelines with the CPMI ISO 222 data requirements to realize the full benefits of harmonization for end users around the world. So this is looking very, very interesting. And obviously bear in mind that Quant Gilbert Verdian is very, very much intertwined with this. Um, we can also see this. I put out this tweet the other day. Quant built the whole infrastructure around the digital pound and issued it on their tech before opening up to payment service providers to integrate. This was a quote from Gilbert Verdian. Now, I know which team I'm backing. And as you can see here, FinExtra, could CBDCs help prevent fraud? Mandatory reimbursement for victims of authorized push payment APP scams came into full effect under the payment systems regulator, the PSR, at the end of last year. And you can see here UK Finance in its half year fraud update that fraud fell in the first six months of 2023, being 2% less than the same period in 2022. However, this was still £580 million being stolen, of which £239 million was attributed to APP scams. Yet Verdian proposes the new system would give banks a better view to control fraud, he explains. The issue is the view that banks have is only what happens within the money that comes in and the money that goes out from within the demarcated perimeter. That's the only thing that can see. But when you step back and you look at the whole aspect of fraud, you see these patterns, you see these trends, you see these anomalies. They can easily identify as fraud and you can actually tackle it properly. Quant work with the Bank of England and the BIS on Project Rosalind. Verdian states that Quant built the whole infrastructure around the digital pound and issued it on their tech before opening it up to payment service providers to integrate, including Barclays, MasterCard, Revolut, and WorldPay. 
Project Rosalind concluded in June 2023. Verdian argues that the answer to the question why CBDCs comes down to the ability to code logic into the money itself. For Verdian, this is a smart lock system. Similar to programmable payments, this allows parties to unlock money only when certain criteria are met. This could be fraud checks, allowing the payer to protect themselves before their money is gone. While the benefits of CBDCs to fraud seem clear, it may not be obvious why we have to make a move to CBDCs. Many of the things being discussed here could be possible within the current banking system, with the added benefit of not having to overhaul our existing infrastructure. Additionally, like in all cases of new technology, fraudsters will always find a way to develop new ways of committing crimes. However, Verdian had a response for this, which is the current system is just not fit for purpose in a digital world. The system the system needs overhauling because it's no longer fit for purpose for a very digital society. So what we've got today is a legacy architecture that was designed 30 years ago. What we need is a next generation system that can grow as we grow, but it can also meet demands of a marketplace today. Yes, there is always going to be fraud and there is always going to be malicious actors trying to bypass controls. But for the first time, we've got a new tool up our sleeves because we've never had this before. Now that is absolute fighting talk from Gilbert Verdian. And with everything that we're seeing right now, absolutely awesome. So there you go, guys. Just a quick update on what's going on in the news, what's going on with the Quant Network. Remember, if you like this video, please subscribe. Please hit that like button because you'll be doing me a massive favor. So there you go. All the best and I'll catch you later.